So, a lot of people want to know about the difference between pharmaceutical grade GH growth and the stuff from China or wherever else it may be from. And I want people to understand that when you buy the drug from China, it's different than when you have it imported. Now, there's been a few different types of methods of the filterization of human growth hormone and the synthetic versions, okay? Um, the way that 191 amino acid sequence has been filtered, there's been, there's been two ways that it's been done with a whole RDNA uh, through, the, through the entire process. And that is if it needs to be reconstituted or if it has to be, um, if it already comes pre-mixed. The one, the, the company that has the patent for the pre-mixed one is the, is the Nordotropin brand, which is the pre-mixed one. And that is very stable. And the one that has to be reconstituted, meaning you have to add water to it, um, comes in a few different um, brands. And um, whenever you have mixed the water and the powder, if it's shaken after it's mixed, it becomes cloudy and it's no longer good. And it has to be shipped from the minute it's made until it's done being used, it has to be refrigerated. Now these are the companies that made it and the American drug companies that made it. And they didn't, they didn't make it that way uh, intentionally. It's the way the drug is. Preserving of the drug was one of the biggest issues when it was first made because refrigeration and, and initially when they were first giving it, it was being given in the hospital. It wasn't even given to people to take it home. The, the initial runs of the uh, humotrope were being done, actually protrope and humotrope. So why did, why is that an issue? Okay. And what does that actually mean? Why that's an issue is because what it actually is, is it's, it's ma made in an E. coli strain. Now the E. coli is free of anything that could be uh, contaminated, but that's in essence, let's just try to say it's bacteria. So I mean, this is this is the crude, and it, it's not the same. But in essence, you wouldn't have meat left out at room temperature all day, and you know go, it would go bad, or milk it would go rancid, you know things of that nature. And growth hormone is the exact same thing. There is no difference. So human growth hormone has to be refrigerated from the minute it's made till the minute it's used. However, serostem is different. Serostem is different, and that's not approved for usage in uh, midgets or pituitary deficiency like real human growth hormone that's made with the RDNA through the whole thing. It's not the same. It's approved for HIV patients or people that are terminally ill, um, but not for even weight gain or anything like that, which growth hormone wouldn't be, but it's, it's, it's specifically for HIV. So. What does that mean? When you actually look at the way that, it, that serostem is made and the reason why it's not approved for uh, children and it's only approved for people that have HIV is because the first part of it is the RDNA and the second part of it is filtered through a mouse membrane. Rat, mouse, whatever you want to call it. It says mammalia mouse. You can look at this under the description of the drug, which is available online. If you just look this up from the maker of the company, they provide the uh, package insert uh, online. And then you can also look at the humotrope or the nortotropin or the other ones, and they're made with the RDNA technology through the entire process. It is a synthetic, synthetic process. There is no uh, animal byproduct filtration or cell membrane filtration or anything like that. So, the purity is much higher and so is the consistency. Now, why does that change the way that it has to be shipped? I'm not 100% sure about that, but I do know that the other drug companies could save a lot of money if they, did, if they used some sort of technology that the FDA would approve. Now, in general, when human growth hormone, the real human growth hormone, let's just stick to the humotrope, for this sake of argument, but humotrope, nortotropin, omnitrope, um, there's there's a bunch of different ones, okay? Um, 
So you take you take this particular genotropin is another really good one, by the way. You take this product and you reconstitute it. You mix it with water, and now it has a certain time. It's no longer the full potency after about 28, 14 to 28 days, depending on whether it's in a bottle or it's in a pen. If it's in a pen, they've made it. They condensed it to the point where. There's a few other factors too, different preservatives I use, but it's a little bit more advanced than the older bottles that have to be reconstituted. And the pen technology is vacuum sealed, um, which allows it to be shipped for, a, some of them allows it to be shipped for some time out of the refrigerator, even the real deal. Now that's maybe like 20, 20 days or something. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean it can't, can't get warm, but uh, it can withstand that. And that's only in the very initial the beginning of it so if it needs to be set made from the manufacturer then shipped at room temperature to the wholesaler wholesale distributor that's okay before it had to be refrigerated it had to be kept cold uh, or shipped and packed in dry ice or you know or, or, or shipped cold prior to that so the new technology has allowed for that however what we're seeing from hydrantropin and other Chinese brands uh, that are out there, even the Korean Omnis, Omni, An Anisonome, which which is one of the better ones actually, um, is is that it comes through U.S. Customs, guys, and this is the one that has to be reconstituted, the one that the United States initially started with Eli Lilly, and it had to be refrigerated. So it's not the pen, okay? This is you're getting the bottles with the powder at the bottom, and the bottle with the powder at the bottom. If it's real, it will lose its potency so quickly at room temperature that it could actually, and you could tell by the appearance of it, by the way, <clears throat> Humatrope, when it was in bottles, if it had never been taken out of the refrigerator, it looked kind of like a dense snowflake and it shined a little bit and it crept up the side of the bottle a little bit. And if it did slide, in the in the in the thing it was it, it was stuck to the it was slow if you flipped it upside down it didn't just drop what you're seeing these days is like a dried chalk disc it doesn't have the shine it doesn't have the translucentness like you could hold the humidrope up to light you could kind of see into it a little bit with this stuff it's it's a dense uh pressure or compacted chalk and you could tell when you reconstitute it that you know uh, some of it, it, it takes a long time to dissolve. What does that mean? That means that it lost it, it, its, its, its air, basically. It dried out, and now it's shrunk. And the bacteria that, uh, well, the bacteria that was holding it together and preserving it, that it's bound with, is now becoming old and rancid and stale. And it can't bind to the drug, making it basically... I don't want to say evaporate, but it gets destroyed pretty damn quickly as it starts to condense and shrink. I've seen this because I've seen Humatro bottles that were accidentally left out, and then when I tried to, this is a long time ago, when I tried to reconstitute it, some of it stuck to the edges. It, it took a long time to reconstitute, whereas the humotrope that had been refrigerated the entire time the very first drop of water that hit it and it looked like phew, the snowflake the whole snowflake kind of thing just kind of phew, just disappeared anybody that's ever seen the real humotrope from back in the days they know this and they know exactly what i'm talking about and and it had that band-aid smell which it's identifiable now as some sort of preservative that they use but here's the thing if it was fake or it, it, it was some other company that we see from you know China or whatever, it doesn't have that same sort of smell. And it wasn't just a smell that you smell when you mix it up, like you could smell it when a little couple bubbles, bubbles, bubbles came out the, the bottle. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you take it, you could smell it in your nose after you take it, after you inject it. Like a few minutes later, you could taste it in your tongue and you kind of like smell it and it smelled like a band-aid kind of like a very sterile like band-aid and it was a very powerful smell and you don't have that with these other chinese stuff now given all that may mean nothing okay i think it means a lot but because i think it means that the drug company didn't cut corners and i think it means they made a higher quality product and then i actually smell that band-aid smell in genotropin also so I know that it's 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 that's Pfizer. I know that's there are good companies. These are American drug companies. I I get the real shit, and I know, and I've seen the the Chinese stuff, and you know, 
I've, I'm talking like the difference of I take two IUs of the real deal and 10 IUs of the Chinese stuff doesn't make me look even the same as the two because it comes with a different look. And now what that leads me to believe is it may not be 191 amino acids sequenced in the correct order to provide humotrope formula, it may actually be some sort of peptidish formula that could cause an increase in your IGF-1 levels. Guys, this isn't difficult for the fucking Chinese to do. I mean, come on. They're out, they have a lot of pharma, pharmacological technology. They can get stuff for a cheaper price, and all that's true. Now, what if it is real? What if they didn't cut corners? You still got to go through customs, and it's going to be at room temperature for about three days. And let's just say that it reduces by one-third strength each day. That means your product's basically worthless by the time you get it. And that's why you think you need 10 IUs. And you never quite feel it. Or if you do take 10 IUs, think about that means that you're taking five times more than what I am. And I know because I had to take, the, I tried the other stuff too. And I had to take a lot, a lot of it to feel it also compared to what I'm using, which is the real pharmaceutical version. And it was handled properly. And it was here in the United States, not shipped. There's a big difference, okay? And the difference is, is that two IUs that I could do a half IU four times a day, you can't even do five IUs twice a day to get what I get out of it because it's not the same. Part of it's been destroyed, and then you really don't know how much of it you're actually taking, and then we really don't know what the part that's been de degenerating or being destroyed, actually what it becomes. We don't know that. So that may also have some sort of effects, negative effects of growth hormone, but maybe not the positive ones. And another thing too, is that even the American one says that it's expired after a certain number of days and that it goes cloudy if you shake it. So given that that is the correct formula, how come the Chinese stuff doesn't go, doesn't go cloudy when you shake it? How come, how come it's, it supposedly can be shipped without it being refrigerated and the technology isn't different? It's not the pen, it's still the bottle. Ask yourself that. So then when you ask yourself that, you may get, oh, well, you know, where do I get the real deal from? Does it really matter? Does it really matter? If you're willing to spend money on something that's not legit, why not just save your money until the one day you can get it? You'll meet the right people. It'll happen. Don't call me. I'm not going to tell you how to get it. Don't even bother. Uh, but look, there's enough forums out there. If you really want to look for the real shit, you'll take some time and energy and find it and you'll find the source and understand what I'm saying. It must be shipped cold unless it's nortotropin or unless it's genotropin pen or humotrope pen. And then it can be it can be shipped without it being refrigerated, but it should still be stored cold. Okay? So if there's any more questions that you guys have about human growth hormone, uh, about the you know how much should I take generic versus regular, there is no real answer to that because of what I just said. We don't know what the effects are of what's been degenerated. Number one. Number two, the real deal. Is it worth it or not? That depends. If you have the money, yes, it's worth it. If you don't have the money, well, don't spend the money on something that's not real. And I can't stress that enough, guys. Spending money on growth hormone that's supposed to be legit, but it's not, isn't going to do the same thing as spending money on the real deal. Um, the real deal doesn't require taking that much. And growth hormone never was never created for muscle. And that doesn't mean that because it wasn't created for muscle, it can't be used to build muscle. It can be. But people have to understand, it was made to make midgets or people who would have a deficiency of pituitary uh, before they grow, actually, initially, not adult, initially for, for, for kids, to become the right height, which means they have to grow their bone. And when one grows their bone, subsequently, in proportion so does the soft tissue the organs the heart the lungs kidneys because they grow in proportion with the body those tissues are not bound by fiber muscle tissues are bound by fiber they require stimulation in order for them to grow the problem is the other organs don't. So when you start taking more and more growth hormone, you're going to get more and more side effects. And those side effects, when you go off of it, they don't go away. Compounded with you build an incredible tolerance quickly, and which means you need to take a larger amount to get the good effects. And then when you go off of it again, whatever fiber you developed from a synthesized process of cell cell. Uh, 
cell hypotrophy and mitosis from IGF-1, okay, that's going to stay with you under those conditions. But it takes continual stimulation. Soft organ tissue is not bound by fiber. So when you're breathing heavy to do cardio, if you're taking excessive amounts of growth that are going to cause more than just muscle growth, which isn't a lot to cause muscle growth, because really it's all about IGF-1, it's not about growth hormone. So you want to create IGF-1. So taking lots of growth hormone is counterproductive. And taking lots of growth hormone and lots of insulin is counterproductive because then you raise it to a point where it, it, the cell can't synthesize as, as fast as it should. It forms a, a mutated type cell. And then the extra growth hormone goes towards the developing of the organs in a very, very rapid way. Because the heart's going to keep beating nonstop. And you're going to be bigger, which means your heart's going to be beating faster. You're probably on steroids, which means you have high blood pressure, which means your heart's beating faster. So your heart's going to grow. Now, when you get lung growth and kidney growth and liver growth, that means the amount you're taking is easily over five times what is needed for muscle growth. So it's not that I'm an advocate of taking small amounts of growth hormone. I'm an advocate of taking the amount that actually works. I'm an advocate of taking growth hormone that works, not something that we're not sure of exactly what it is in the bottle, how much of it could be active or not, Theoretically, three days at room temperature, not much of it is going to be what it's supposed to be. And then again, products that we're getting here in the United States via mail through customs that don't have the same type of uh, characteristics of the American ones. So is it is it just me saying, oh, the American stuff is better? No. Get both of them, try both at a small dose, and you compare it for yourself. But when you see how quickly one mixes and how quickly the other one doesn't and look at all of the things how fast as you get warmer is your hand getting numb on the real deal is it getting numb on the chinese stuff get a lot of people tell me about their hands getting numb on the chinese stuff got news for you carpal tunnel syndrome shouldn't happen overnight it takes time just like muscle growth from growth hormone takes time so it's not a direct indicator that your growth hormone is real what is a direct indicator that your growth hormone is real is getting phenomenal results from it, having to take insulin after some time because your, your body will require it, and then that small amounts of it or increasing your sugar, which actually still won't do it because your liver needs help to produce it. But in the beginning, that may help. Just eating overall more calories and getting a really good look without trying to force a bunch of water into your body. And I see that a lot more with people that take the Chinese stuff or the other stuff. They're taking higher doses of insulin, too, to see if they can get the synergistic effect. When in reality, if it's real, you don't really need that much of either one. It still has to sell, still has to synthesize. They still have to split and divide. Both those cells have to become bigger. And this process happens with a combination of steroids and growth hormone and time and food the proper amount of food to set the whole thing off. So if you don't have the food, you can't make up for it by taking more drugs. You can't make up for the time. Nothing can make up for the time. The time can be shortened if you do it correctly with the right amount of food, but no more than what's necessary is actually going to make you put on muscle. Your weight may go up when you take more growth hormone, but that's because the soft tissues end up retaining more water on their way to becoming larger. Can you reverse that? Depending on how far into it it goes. So should you take growth hormone every day, even if it is real? No, because you don't want to build a tolerance to it, especially if it's real. You want to be able to keep it at a dose of under four IUs no matter what and always have that dose work. The minute you have to go above that dosage for whatever reason, whether it's not what it's supposed to be, because then you really don't know what it is, whether it is and you've built a tolerance to it or whether you're simply ignorant and you've been taking too much, it doesn't matter. Only a small amount of human growth hormone makes muscle grow. And the majority of the muscle growth comes from IGF-1, which is created in the liver as a byproduct of insulin and growth hormone. Okay, And you cannot take more insulin and more growth hormone to speed up a process which takes time. Just like you can't plant a seed and have a tree the very next day. No matter how many chemical fertilizers you use, no matter how much miracle Grow you put in it, it still takes time. So please, people, be safe, be smart, use your mind, don't pay for fake drugs, don't experiment with dosages on things that aren't accurate. 
save your money and if you can't afford it do the real thing because at least you know what to compare it to have you try anything else in the future you know what the real deal is under small amounts of it and if you do happen to get something that's real for a better price great at least you know what it's supposed to work like till next time thank you again be safe